Hello, hello my friends and welcome back to another Top 10 Countdown. I'm your host Teresa and today we'll be counting down through creepy, slimy and arguably kinda cute, the Top 10 Bizarre Ocean Creatures You've Never Heard Of. Starting off at number 10 is the Japanese Spider Crab. This isn't the type of crab you'll see staring back at you from the fish counter of a metro. These guys usually sit around a thousand feet deep below the waterline. Growing up to 15 inches wide, the spider crab can weigh an average of 44 pounds. To give some perspective, the average crab usually weighs one third of a pound. Spider crabs also earn their name as unlike the average crab, their legs are extremely long, wide and spindly, suspending the body up the way a daddy long leg spider would kind of look. Native to the Pacific Ocean, it's one of the largest known anthropods, a group of invertebrate animals that includes lobsters, spiders and insects. No need to be scared however, these guys are known as gentle giants that scavenge dead animals and plants. They're also part of the decorator crab group, who like to adorn their shells with sponges and other corals. Crab fashion, that's kind of nice. Next up is meme material, number 9, the blobfish. The winner of 2013's ugliest animal award, the blobfish is gelatinous with no bones and pretty much no muscle either. Now it resides at 3,000 feet deep where it looks a lot less out of place as that deep the water pressure hits about 120 times that of surface level. The intense level of water pressure would be hard to endure without being a gelatinous husk, so it appears this creature had just adapted. When you see images or drawings of the blobfish and what it looks like in the correct water pressure, its body actually formulates together and looks like a close to normal everyday fish. The blobfish, unlike many other fish, doesn't have the air sac in its gut that aids in buoyancy. If a fish with one is removed from its habitat, sometimes the air sac escapes through the fish's mouth and brings its organs and insides out with it, which is a nasty way to go. Blobfish, however, doesn't have an air sac and relies on the water pressure to be its structural support and buoyancy, thus regaining its shape and water pressure. Go blobfish! Take this as a lesson in body shaming. Being different isn't bad. Sometimes it means you aren't in the right environment and you need a little support. Number 8 on the countdown, however, gets no slack. It's an ugly and evil undersea Pinocchio, the goblin shark. Known for being a living fossil, the goblin shark has swum in the oceans of the world for the last 125 million years, when primitive mammals were just starting to be recorded. Similar to the blobfish, it has a pale pinkish color due to translucent skin. The common result of living 4,300 feet deep. But these terrifying creatures have been seen as high as 130 feet deep late at night. It's earned its goblin title, with 53 long fangs protruding from the upper jaw and 62 from the bottom, its bulging jaw protrudes from its face, no longer than the ridiculous long forehead nose thing. To make matters worse, this animal slingshots just its jaw forward from its face to hunt. For perspective, if a human were capable of doing that, we could eat something that was 7 feet away from us. It's too deep for a goblin shark to pose any threats to humans, and god please, let's keep it that way. Oh, and we're back to bugs. Number 7, the giant isopod. My bug phobia people from point 10 may start hating me because this crustacean resembles a jumbo potato bug. Living on the ocean floor, it's in the family of shrimps and crabs, but actually the roly poly potato bugs that hang out in your gardens as well. Now the deep sea version is a little bigger, growing as big and sometimes bigger than 16 inches with a whopping 14 legs. Research requires extensive submersible to observe them over long times, and there aren't many people formulating research around them, so there's still a lot about these creatures we don't know much about, such as their mating, birthing, and internal functions. Why is it so expensive to research? The giant isopod lives in an extreme habitat, the deep sea. They live an average of 1600 feet or lower, where there's less than one millionth of the sunlight found on the surface of the water. A level of perceivable darkness you and I will never see. Speaking of unseemly creatures of dark depths, the giant squid of folklore is number 6 on the countdown. Ok, if you have heard about this, it was likely in a fictional movie or a novel depiction, so I'm saying that doesn't count because many people don't know that the giant squid is a real creature. In Japan on April 25th of 2022, hundreds of people got that reality check when a still living giant squid washed up on the shores of a beach. Normally a shore wash up occurs after the they've passed and their bodies are rocked by water currents. It was abnormal that a living one washed up and this big guy was packed up and sent for rehabilitation at a Japanese aquarium where he remains today. In the case of the 2022 Jumbo, the squid was 9.8 feet long. That's actually pretty small. The average giant squid is 50 plus feet in length. Their eyes, which are 1 foot in diameter, are the largest found 
down on any living creature, and its enormous tentacles are allowed to grab prey from even 30 feet away. But there is always a bigger fish. While these squids don't have many predators due to the effects of giantism having the upper hand, their beaks or tentacle remnants have been found in the stomachs of sperm whales. That's one big batch of calamari. And number five on the countdown is first in line for that calamari, the frilled shark. Like the goblin shark, the frilled shark is considered a living fossil status. This shark has barely ever evolved from the state in which it was first discovered or ever. It has next to no surviving relatives either. The frilled shark gets its name from the frilly appearance of its gill slits. But don't be deceived by a cute name, its appearance is grisly and prehistoric. It has a visual element of an eel, but arguably also an alligator. Its long cylindrical body reaches a length of nearly 7 feet and its fins are placed far back on its body. Frilled sharks are active predators who may lunge at potential prey, swallowing it whole even if it is quite large. They have been known to feed on fish, eels, and their favorites being squid and even other sharks. What's most strange, however, is how this creature breeds. Frilled sharks reproduce via internal fertilization and give live birth. However, they do not connect through a placenta like most mammals. Instead, their embryos live off of their own yolk sacs, and only after the juveniles are able to survive on their own does the mother give birth to her young. This is said to be the longest gestation period of any creature, taking up to three years. That essentially is like if a human somehow kept their baby inside of them until it was a toddler. Ugh. Finally, some light in the darkness. Quite literally. Number four is the elusive glass octopus. You know the scene in American Beauty where that creepy kid next door is like romantically enamored by the visual of a plastic bag in the wind? Not gonna lie, that's kinda how I felt watching the footage of this almost ethereal being as it floated around in the dark depths. Now, unlike the plastic bag that little twit fawned over in the movie, this is worth going gaga over. Researchers from the Schmidt Ocean Institute released footage of an elusive glass octopus off the coast of the remote Phoenix Islands, located more than 3,200 miles northeast of Sydney, Australia. It was originally discovered during their 34-day Central Pacific expedition, where for 182 hours, they scanned the seafloor. During the scan, they found the beautiful glass octopus. The species gets its names from its almost translucent body, with only its cylindrical eyes, optic nerves, and digestive tract appearing opaque. They can grow about 1.5 feet long and are estimated to live only two to five years. As you may remember from the goblin shark or the blobfish, deep sea animal development is shaped around the lack of sunlight and around water pressure. And glass octopus is no exception, living at an average of 3,000 feet deep. The glass octopus lives deep, hard to reach places, so there's much we don't know about this translucent and luminescent cephalopod. There have been only a few sightings and a couple remains found in animal stomachs. Personally, I could watch it swim around all day. But we have to move on. So number three is the barrel eye fish. Nothing I title this segment as can prepare you for the picture you're going to see. Averaging a water depth of 2100 feet, footage of this creature was caught on an ROV camera in the Monterey Submarine Canyon, the deepest submarine canyon of the Pacific coast. This species has only been spotted or reported nine times, despite over 5600 deep dives being done in this fish's habitat. The barrel eye fish first appeared very small out in the blue distance, but I immediately knew what I was looking at. It couldn't be mistaken for anything else. This was said by Thomas Knowles, a senior aquarist at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. But why was it so distinctive to him? Well, this bizarre fish has a translucent forehead and face, which actually looks through using a pair of bulbous green eyes that are inside its head. That's right, I'm saying the whole body is just normal opaque fish body, but its head, and ironically the back fin too, are entirely transparent. They can move their eyes to look forward, but they mainly look up in search for prey. Imagine we all had a layer of skin over our eyes, but it was see-through. Yeah, that's that thing's life. So you can see through this creature's entire musculatory and structural system, and more importantly, it can look back through it at you. Number two in the countdown has me happy photos get added in post. The red hand fish, which I swear I can't look at this thing without a little bit of a laugh. This guy's just too funny looking. Part of the angler fish family, these little fishies have little arm and hand like fins that they used to walk across the ocean floor rather than swim. Found in the Australian and Tasmanian waters, the little guys are thought to have a measly population of just 100 adults. It's a low reproductive rate and a low dispersal rate and it makes it a challenge for the species survival. Fragmentation of the population is also a challenge for reproductive success as the only two reported colonies are in Tasmania and Australia and aren't near each other and don't interact as far as we know. Growing to about 15 centimeters long, its skin has scales reminiscent of teeth and can also come in colorations such as spotted or pink. To help attract their prey, which are other small fish, they have a fluffy 
lure on their forehead. Like other anglerfish, they're ambush predators, which means they prefer to sit and wait amongst seaweed, sponges, coral, etc. for their prey to swim past before they strike. Recent government funding will help build resilience against threats to the wild, red handfish populations. Either way, this is one fish you'll always catch red handed. Huh? Yeah? Alright, alright. Finally number one is one silly freaky dude with a weird name, the black swallower. This is our deepest sea buddy discussed so far. Surviving at a depth of 10,000 feet, which is 30 times the length of a football field, this fish is a shocking only 9 inches. But this fish embodies the message that size doesn't matter. Thanks to a balloon like stomach, large mouth, and jutting lower jaw, it can swallow other fish and ocean life whole. Similar to how snakes can swallow a whole deer, it can consume oceanic life up to twice its length and 10 times its weight. Its hooked inward pointing teeth retract to make room for the prey and then interlock to keep it inside. But gluttony is a sin and if they take on too much fish or they simply just gorge too much, their meal can sit in their expandable stomach decomposing and releasing gases and then it becomes a race between those gases and digestion. Sometimes luck isn't on their sides and the gas in their stomach inflates to the point of buoyancy and carries the fish upward thousands of feet into the low pressure water zone, which is an uninhabitable space for a high pressure creature, resulting in their demise. Despite the risk of floating themselves up to death, their eat first, ask questions later strategy is clear clearly working out for the species. Black swallowers are very abundant in the temperate and tropical Atlantic as well as the Gulf of Mexico. Remember that the next time you hit the beaches on a Mexican getaway trip. Thank you so much for tuning in to see some fascinating oceanic life and learn something new. We'll always have more for you so be sure to like and subscribe and comment down below which creature you would least want to run into.